it's magical. You look out the window and you see those first snowflakes start to fall and you can't help but get a little excited that, you know, is this going to be a big storm? And Depending on the weather, the temperature, humidity, everything you want to take into consideration with it. There's not supposed to be any two alike. In a time before computers, digital cameras, and even electricity, 10-year-old Wilson Bentley had a dream to capture the beauty of a snow crystal. Always, from the very beginning, it was the snowflakes that fascinated me most. The farm folks up in this country dread the winter, but I was supremely happy. Oh, I think the whole thing is, is incredibly yeah. strange and special. The idea of this guy running around chasing snowflakes and making these negatives of them. It's just astonishing. It's, it's so uh, obsessive and passionate and to make it then a life's work. It's a great story. Bentley was born on February 9, 1865 in Jericho, Vermont. His father was a farmer and his mother was a teacher. His mother had an old microscope as she used in her school teaching. So Bentley sat out in a shed in the back of the house using the old microscope and looking at snow crystals. He did this again and again and again. Bentley was a lover of nature and he was infatuated with the symmetry of the snowflake. There was hexagonal beauty in the structures themselves. I became possessed with a great desire to show people this wonderful loveliness. He decided he had to get a camera. This, this is the actual piece that he purchased. It's, the, it's a bellows camera. Uh, the rest of it, he had to adapt for the camera and then add the microscope onto it. Uh, one of the problems he had was that the microscope was in the front and he had to view the, the, the snowflake from behind and he was unable to reach and focus. So what he did, he designed this uh, pulley system with a string and some wooden wheels and he attached it to the fine focus of the microscope so that when he was behind the camera looking through it he'd be able to focus the microscope to get a clear picture of the snowflake. Yeah, At the time photography was probably only 20 years old and most of it was portrait photography so to interface the camera with the microscope was a rather unique thing. The actual making of these photographs couldn't have been more difficult, could not have been harder. He's so got this guy chasing around in some field uh, with his piece of black velvet, catching the thing on, the, you know, catching a little snowflake on the piece of black velvet, and then he's manipulating it with a feather. They had chickens in their chicken coop, and he would get a feather. There's always eh, feathers in his feathers all over the place. He picked up a feather. And with that feather, he could move that snowflake around to get just the ones that he wanted and push away the others. He'd bring it back in the shed, and he'd very carefully look at it. And if he found a snow crystal he wanted to photograph, he would pick it up very gently and put it on the microscope slide. Then he would put that in front of the camera and point the camera out into the storm so you get in the flight. He worked with transmitted light. He had no electricity, so he had to use the light, natural light that he was able to get. It would take him anywhere from maybe 20 seconds to maybe two minutes for the exposure. But uh, that's how we got it. On January 15, 1885, Wilson Bentley took the very first photograph of a snow crystal. The day that I developed the first negative made by this method, I felt like falling on my knees beside that apparatus and worshipping it. I knew then that what I had dreamed of doing was possible. It was the greatest moment of my life. They are beautiful photographs, first and foremost. And I think that that's the product of this sort of single-minded single vision, just to get it right, to make them look handsome. This was his obsession for the rest of his life. I think you could compare it to the Holy Grail. He was searching for that most magnificent of all snow crystals. 
Oh, for a thousand hands, a thousand cameras, to preserve more of this exquisite beauty, so lavishly scattered over the earth. Bentley was motivated from within, and not from his family, who, who kind of looked down their nose at what he was doing. His father and brother never appreciated what he did, and they thought it was an absolute waste of time. There's always work to do on the farm, and he's out there <laughs> taking pictures of stupid snowflakes. In spite of a lack of understanding and support, Bentley went on to take over 5,000 photographs of snowflakes. Well, it's remarkable that he was able to photograph as many photographs as he did in, in a relatively short period of time. I think on some days he, he was able to photograph more than 50 snow crystals in a single day or a single snowstorm. I think he was just, just looking at them, just really getting off on the total weirdness and beauty and specialness of them. It's not the same kind of world that we had in those days. I don't think people would want to spend that amount of time. They don't have time for this, time for that. I've got to do this. I've got an appointment here. Ta -ta -ta -ta. No way. In the fall of 1931, after years of effort, Bentley finally convinced a publisher to print a complete collection of his snow crystal images. Two days after Thanksgiving, three copies of his book arrived in the mail. And I had to believe he was just overjoyed at that. However, he did not have too much time to enjoy it. A week or so later, I believe he was coming back from Jericho. And uh, I've been told it was pretty cold out and pretty wet and some snow down on the ground. And uh, he got pneumonia. They had a nurse come in, but it was too late. He was getting sicker and sicker. And two days before Christmas, 1931, he died. When he died, I felt badly about it because I just knew that we had lost somebody that was far ahead of everybody else in this particular science. By and large, I think most people don't realize who, who Bentley was. And yet, most of the time when you see an image of a snowflake, it's either the actual image that, that Bentley took or photographed, or it's an artist's reconstruction of that snowflake. I think he is very happy that so many are beginning to appreciate what he had been doing. Really. I, I hope he is, <laughs> but I have an idea. Right?